Hi, I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. It's time for another top 10 list. This one is top 10 fragrances for autumn, niche. Stay tuned to FM. I've done my top 10 designer fragrances for autumn. I ventured as far as my back garden to do that one. This time I've come a little bit further afield and the leaves are just starting to turn, still quite a lot of greenery around, but I've come to a lovely woodland to do the niche version today. So typically with niche fragrances, they're houses that don't have designer brands like clothing or makeup or accessories, things like that. They just make fragrance. Usually they're a little bit more on the pricey side Often they're a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more daring, maybe a little bit more complex. And for me personally, that really works in autumn. I think autumn is a season where complexity in a fragrance really shines through. So let's get into the list. Number 10 is from a house that I wasn't aware of until I went to Milan earlier this year. I spoke to the people at show lovely friendly people they gave me a bottle of this to take away so that i could try it and i love it i really enjoy it it's very similar to baccarat rouge 540 i mean like the same but i don't own a bottle of that it's just as good to me i've not really done a side-by-side -side comparison so i i've not really tested them directly but for me this one works really well it's from show it's called une nuit just like Baccarat Rouge 540, it's sweet, it's smooth, velvety, oh, I love this stuff. Almost got a bit of a candy floss sweetness to it, but there's some greenness, there's some fir balsam, there's some cedar wood adding a really nice woody character. It's autumn, we're in the woods, I think there's no better time to be in the woods than autumn. And this fragrance just works really well here in the woods in autumn. Oh, anywhere else you may happen to be in autumn you don't just have to be in the woods to wear this one it's just that i am now at number nine we're diving into the first tobacco this is simply called tobacco it's from frank mcclay very reminiscent of tom ford's tobacco vanille they're kind of similar to uh, other well-known scents so far but don't worry this is this is not a, a clone or a dupe list it just so happens that it's very like tobacco vanille. So obviously you've got that lovely kind of sweet, slightly resinous tobacco, you've got the vanilla, but you've got some spices as well. So, so far, so tobacco vanille. This has a plum note, so it's just got a slight bit of dark plum going on in here, which just makes it just slightly richer, slightly deeper than tobacco vanille. It's probably not as loud as tobacco vanille. It's a beautiful fragrance to wear in the autumn. I, uh, I adore this one, oh, that's great. Um, this is actually really good value. You can pick this one up 100 mil for about 100 pounds. So for a niche fragrance that smells this good, that's very like tobacco vanille, maybe just a touch darker. Tobacco from Frank McClay, great option for autumn. And number eight, it's one from House of Siage. Nope, it's not number one. Although that would work really well in autumn and it did feature in a list of fragrances that I said would work really well in autumn. But I thought I'd include something different in this one. I may include number one on my winter list. This is brand new for 2019. It's called The Formal and it's from The Gentleman Collection. This is a really nice modern masculine fragrance. It's a little spicy, a little sweet, a little creamy. We've got some cloves, some nutmeg, some sage, some ginger. There's a really nice violet leaf accord going on in this quite similar to how the violet leaf is done in green irish tweed the overall fragrance doesn't smell like green irish tweed but that violet leaf that is so recognizable in git i feel i can pick out in this one a lovely smooth creamy base there's some sandalwood and amber and tonka so everything is just balanced really nicely it smells very masculine very modern uh, performance is pretty good I think this is fairly versatile. It works really well in slightly cooler temperatures and slightly warmer temperatures, which is why I think it works well in autumn. So the formal, I think, is just that. I think it would work really well, maybe at an autumn wedding or somewhere where you're, you're dressed up, you've got a nice suit, spray this and you'll be winning. The next one is from a house that I really enjoy. Every release I get excited about and their latest release is called Los Angeles. This is another one that 
works so well in autumn because it has some notes and characteristics that work really well in warmer temperatures and some that really bring out the best in the composition in cooler temperatures. So there's some fruits in there, there's some florals. Uh, the heart of this fragrance seems to be based around tuberose, but it's not just a, it's not a piercingly sweet tuberose, it's just very nice and quite mellow. And then there's some woods and some kador, which adds some lovely darker textures to this one. I've really been enjoying wearing Los Angeles for the last couple of months. Here in a Yorkshire woodland, it's pretty much as far away from Los Angeles as you could get, but it's still working, okay? That's testament to the versatility of this fragrance. It doesn't just work in LA. Anyway, great release from Galavant. At number six is one of the best things I've smelled this year. It's from the house of Nishane. No, it's not Fanny Flames, which crops up on a lot of these autumn and winter lists. I don't have that one, maybe. I will have that one by next autumn and it will be on the list, but today I'm talking about Hatchivat. To give you an idea of how this one smells, it's in a similar ballpark to Aventus, it's not the same as Aventus, got a similar opening, similar fruity opening, but then it takes a different route, it doesn't have that birch, it doesn't have that smoky birch accord in this, so the dry down is quite different. In this one we do have oak moss, so you get that lovely kind of full bodied greenness to this fragrance. It's kind of like walking barefoot on soft spongy moss is how I would describe the dry down of this fragrance. It's beast performance. It's perhaps a little rougher around the edges than Aventus, maybe not quite as refined if I'm being honest, but I think that's probably why it has such great performance. And number five is another tobacco fragrance. Of course, we know tobacco works really well in the autumn. This one made my list last year as well. It's an absolute classic. It's from the house of Serge Leton. It's Shaggy. I think this is a really elegant take on tobacco. It's not too dark, it's not too resinous. There's a famous hay note in here, which to me seems to add kind of an airiness and a breeziness to the fragrance, which just works really well with the tobacco. Also, there's some incense, which just adds an extra little bit of mystery. Shaggy is a classic. Um, you're gonna feel classy when you wear this. This DNA is unlike any other DNA I smell. It's a pretty unique fragrance and in my eyes this is a masterpiece. At number four is a fragrance from Scent Salim. They're based not far from me here. They're based in Leeds. I visited their shop. I've got a video on their shop. They have many different kinds of ouds, real natural ouds from the source. High quality, high quality stuff. The fragrance I talked about from them last year was the beautiful Calamat. This one is called London Oud. I already had the oil version of this one which I really enjoyed. This is the spray version so you get a little bit more projection. It's woody, it's spicy, it's a little bit fruity. There's some frankincense in here as well and it's all smoothed out by beautiful sandalwood. This just smells pure opulent luxury. Great performance on this. It's not really heavy but it's not light either. So I think that's just why it works so well in the autumn. London Oud from Saint Salim, beautiful. On to number three. Now, if you've watched much of my channel, you will know that I'm a big fan of the house of Nassamato. I have a few, and I had a real hard choice to make to choose one to include in this video. I could have included them all. Actually, I think all of the ones I own from the house work really well in autumn. I went for what is my favorite from the house and that's Pardon. Pardon is just a really stunning blend to me. It just really interests me. It's rich, it's complex, it's different, it's quite a unique DNA. It's also got some darkness and some sweetness. It's incredibly gratifying to wear, but it also has mass appeal as well due to the sweetness. It's a little floral, a little spicy, a lot masterpiece. All the way up at number two is a brand new perfumer who's just launched an amazing line of fragrances this year. It's Aaron Terrence Hughes. To be honest, there's so many in his lineup that I could have chosen for autumn. I was really spoiled for choice. I've gone with one that I've already done a video on. This is definitely one of my favorites from the collection, probably because it contains tobacco. It's tobacco, oud, and vanilla. I adore this stuff, wonderful composition from Aaron. I know it's not a hybrid of Tom Ford's Tobacco Oud and Tobacco Vanille, definitely doing its own thing. It's rich, it's complex, 
The vanilla in here is amazing. Aaron makes his own vanilla tinctures over a period of 12 months and you can really smell the quality of that vanilla in here. He also uses real Burmese oud, so it's just got a little bit of a slight kind of oudy, animalic punch, but balanced perfectly with that beautiful, well-rounded, sweet, natural vanilla. And uh, with the resinous tobacco, it just works so well. This is another one that is sweet and complex, but also mass appealing. It's got stellar performance. I can't fault this fragrance in any way. For the notes and the accords I like in fragrance, this one, pretty much perfect for me. Okay, my number one, might be a little bit predictable if you know my channel. This also made number one in my autumn niche fragrance list last year, but that was the Eau de Parfum version. This is the Parfum version, so I thought, let's put it at number one again. It is, of course, Roger Parfum's Enigma. This is an incredible composition. It just blows me away every time I spray this. It is an amazing smoky cognac. It's got some sweetness, there's vanilla, there's some spices, it has ginger in here. It's just an absolute dream to wear. I will never tire of wearing this fragrance. I make sure I don't wear it too often. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to wear it out. I don't want to lose that amazing feeling of, uh, of smelling this when I haven't worn it a little while. So I choose my occasions carefully. I am going to one of my best friend's weddings uh, week after next, where I'm uh, actually best man. So I'm going to be wearing this fragrance on that day. I now have an even deeper appreciation of Enigma. I was recently lucky enough to meet Roger himself and I made a video where I talked to him about his inspiration for Enigma. So to sit there with Roger, to listen to his wonderful stories and uh, find out the inspiration behind a fragrance that I love so much was just very special to me. One of the things I love most about Enigma is it can't be cloned. I've not yet smelled a clone that gets the DNA completely. Some have come quite close, they give you an idea, but nothing, nothing really gets it properly. And I love that, I love that I can wear this and I know I'm not gonna smell anyone else wearing it. No one can get a clone of this that smells as good. So I know even if someone's wearing a clone of an Enigma, I know if I'm wearing this, I'm gonna be smelling better than them. And that keeps this one quite special for me, that uh, if you wanna smell like Enigma, you have to actually wear Enigma. To me, this is a shining example of the art of perfumery at its absolute best. If you've not sampled Enigma yet, more fool you. So there are my autumn recommendations on the niche side of things. I've loved coming to the woodland today to do this video. I feel that to be in nature helps really connect me more to the season of autumn in a way because I'm, I'm surrounded by nature which uh, reflects autumn back to us in the colours. That helps me feel more connected to the fragrances I'm talking about and I hope that comes across in the video because I've really enjoyed talking about them to you. Do you own any of these? Have you tried them? What do you think of them? Uh, let me know that. Let me know what your top three niche fragrances for autumn might be. I know there's some that you might have expected to see on this list, which I haven't included, but wait for the winter niche list. Maybe some will appear on there. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Remember, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good.